Timbers defenders Eric Valentin. Eric, welcome. You guys just wrapped up three games in a row on the road. You get four points from it. That, that's good. Uh, you're in a good spot now with three or four games to go in the season. Different from last year when you were kind of at around that playoff line trying to stay in. Now you're trying to stay at the top. Does it feel different? Is the mentality any different heading into the last four? Um, I think the only difference is uh, knowing that we have three or four at home. It's a big part of it. Um, knowing that we have our friends behind us, man, it's been too long. Oh, man, I miss playing at home. <laughs> miss being at Providence Park. But I think just in general, continually you know, taking strides forward in the season and knowing that we can have control in our hands and to be able to control our own fate going into the end of the season is all we could really want at the end of the season. You've started nine out of the last 11 matches. What does it do for a player to have a run of games that you've earned and to earn that right back spot? Um, it's been good. You know, I think uh, I've had a lot of help around me, first mm -hmm. and foremost. Uh, the addition of Larice, I think, can't be um, undershaded, you know, his impact on the team, growing into it and really becoming um, a leader back there and someone who really helps out my game a lot. And um, like I said, when you surround yourself with pretty good players, you know, we have an incredible attacking group that we rotate if need be that really helped me grow into it. And obviously on a personal level, the more games I can play, the more comfortable, the more fit and the more... Um, you know, I can just be ready for, for things that the game throws at me. Speaking of that attacking group, we saw some MLS history on Saturday in Salt Lake City. Diego Valeri scored again. It was his eighth straight match with a goal. It's a streak that started in Houston on July 29th and is still going. Here are all eight of the goals. Three previous players had scored in seven straight. The last to do so was in 2006. It's been a remarkable run for Valeri, and it's helped the team to the Timbers 4-2-2 two two over the eight games of that streak. Uh, it has been quite a run for the maestro. It's, it's an honor. I mean, I'm, I'm happy about that. And uh, it's always nice to make an impact in the league and and trying to help the team, you know, which is the, my goal and in this, in this rhythm of the, of the season where, where we need to make the playoff. Zarek, you're close with uh, Diego Valeri. <laughs> your, your thoughts on this run? Oh, I'm, I'm super happy for him, but I just watched those, and the most impressive thing is every goal is different. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like he had five PKs and he's just kind of been yeah. doing it. One of them was, you know, the first ball was a ball driven in for me. Next one he had a, was a long distance shot against LA. Then he has a header against Colorado. And then in Tor Toronto he dekes up a few people. Then one's a penalty. Then it's another header. It's, it's, and then the one against New York's a volley. It's all, it's all different types of goals. And I think it's, it's a testament to him as a player, you know, to be very versatile in that sense. And also just, like I said, I'm so happy because he's a great player, but he's an even better guy. Yeah. And that's what I, I love the most because he deserves all the success in the world. And like I said, hopefully he can get some more. When you have players in the run of form that he is, but you also have the attacking quartet that you talk about as well. For you uh, as a player playing out of the back, who do you look for first? Is it for Valeri, keep the guy going? You feed him or obviously a Darlington Agby coming back towards it. It's tough to look past him. Uh, it's just, you know, it's tough. Uh, you know, there's so, so many good players up there. You know, as a defender, you try to look the furthest possible pass forward. So if it is Darren or Adi, I'll look forward there. Yeah. And then if not, then you look to the next string of players and you try to put um, the ball in the most dangerous spot possible. But then at the end of the day, I also want to keep the ball. I hate giving it away. Mm -hmm. I hate, you know, need or, you know, needless losses of possession. That's the worst thing in the world. So then it's just a matter of getting good players and letting them do what they do. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes defenders over, try to overplay a little bit. Sometimes just get the ball to those guys and let them, you know, do what they do. You know, the assist I've had, I think I've had three this year, and all three have been to Diego. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been getting the ball to him and letting him do what he does best. The one in San Jose, I played him not such a great ball in the midfield, but he takes it, dribbles through two guys, and slots it away. That's me getting him the ball, and he does the rest, and then eventually he makes me look good. <laughs> You're not giving yourself enough credit, but it's also <laughs> you at times joining in, and we saw the last goal against RSL, Valeri's goal. Thankless task, you overlap and allow Despria to have an extra second to look up to find that pass to, to Valeri. How important is it for your role in, it, in enjoying um, when you can get forward and understand when they get forward? Yeah, I think it's um, it's something as a defender you have to understand that you're going to do a lot of running and you may not always get the ball, but a lot of times, you know, your movement will lead to other players being open. And I think Diego understands that and our front three really understand that. You know, a lot of times you see Darlington will hold on to the ball so that the defense essentially collapses on him. Then he plays it at the last second, which then essentially opens up space for someone else. Things like that are, are, are things that fans may not see, but players on the pitch, you know, really understand. And for me, it's a lot of overlapping, you know, because sometimes I get the ball played two or three times they don't play me. I remember when we played in Houston, 
First time I overlap D, he didn't play me the ball, he shot, keeper makes a save right minute in. Next two times he plays me, and then eventually DeMarcus has to stay more tucked in because Donington's gonna shoot, mm -hmm. ball goes wide, I get it to Valeri and he scores. So things like that, it's a little understanding and knowing that sometimes you have to run and, it, and it's gonna be a lot of effort, but at the end of the day, it's a team sport and if Spree can get the assist, then that's all we need. <laughs>